Awesome. Well, you can go ahead and have a seat. I get the honor of being able to preach this morning. This is such a fun time for me. So, but I'm really excited to be here this morning. We are starting a new series called Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. And I think this is going to be a really fun series. So if this is your first time with us, you're coming at the right time. We're starting a brand new series, getting into something. You're not like halfway through like, oh man, what is going on? I can't keep up with this. No, but this is going to be really fun. We're talking about the different parables that Jesus taught throughout his ministry, all his three years of ministry. Mostly he taught in stories, or we say parables. And it's just like reading to your kids and stuff when they were younger, and you're just trying to tell a story. That's what Jesus is doing here, so that people can understand what he's being what he's teaching and there's two primary things about this when Jesus teaches in parables the first is Jesus's primary teaching was about the kingdom of God if you remember through all the 30 or 40 different parables that Jesus teaches in the gospels of Matthew Mark Luke and John all of them he says the kingdom is God of God is like this the kingdom of God is like that that's what he talks about. And the second one here, and again, I said this already, it's the primary way that Jesus teaches to everybody there. And the reason why he taught in parables or stories is so that we could relate to it a little bit more and we could understand what God is talking about. And if we didn't, it means that we needed to dig in a little bit more to try to understand what he's talking about. Now, as we dive into this series, we're going to discover some uh, similar thoughts things throughout each parable. There's three things I want you to notice as we go through this series and as we go through our message today and our scripture today, there's three things that I want you to look at. First is the mystery. Parables are kind of a mystery, aren't they? Like, what is he talking about? It's like a mustard seed? It's like a net? What is this? There's a mystery to it. But one of the key things about the mystery is that it's the kingdom of God. It's a mystery. Have you seen, has anybody seen the kingdom of God before? Nope, I see no hands. But it's there, and it's true, and it's alive. But it is a mystery to us sometimes as to what it might be. The second is actuality. It is true. And then also, how can we apply that truth to us today? And then finally, it's a response. There's one thing when we hear something, we see something. But with God, there's always a response. When we hear God's word, there's a way for us to respond to it. So as we go through our scripture this morning, I want to look at those three different things. And each parable as we go throughout our series, I want to look at those three things. The mystery, the actuality, and the response. Now we may notice like Jesus, like we said, Jesus teaches in parables. He teaches in stories. Why does he do this? It's like a pastor or a teacher, somebody using a a story as an illustration. And one thing that's great though is that it, it allows us to see it even today. So with that in mind, let's look at our first parable uh, of our series this morning. We're going to be looking in Matthew chapter 13. So if you have your Bible, I would love for you to open it up. Or if you have your phone, there's a thing called the Bible app. You can follow along with me there. I like that one because then I can underline it and highlight it. And my underlines are nice and straight because I underlined in my Bible and they're not always straight. It's the little OCD things. Sorry. Just trying to joke, lighten it up here a little bit this morning. Is that okay? Can we lighten it up a little bit? But Matthew 13, we're looking... uh, Verses 1 through 23. So we've got a lot of scripture here to cover. But as we go through this this morning, see if you can point out these three things. The mystery, the actuality, and the response. Sound good? If not, it's okay because that's what my whole message is about is diving into all three of those. So it's going to be fine, right? All right, Matthew 13, 1 through 23. There it is. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it. While all the people stood on the shore, and then he told them many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell along the rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants out. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to people in parables? But Jesus replied back to them, 
Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will, has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I will heal them. But blessed are you, uh, are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand that the evil one comes and snatches it away, that what was sown in their heart, this is the seed along the path. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealthy choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces crop, yielding 160, 30 times of what was sown. So that's our scripture this morning. That's a long one, right? Did we catch anything of it? Yeah, I hope so. If not, again, it's okay. That's what this all 30 pages of my notes is about. It's okay to laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to just keep it light and fun. We're having fun, right? We're at church. We can have, we can have fun at church, right? Okay. All right, so let's look at this. What, did we find the mystery in this verse? Anybody find the mystery? There's a few in here. You find one ever? What'd you find? You didn't find it. Okay, anybody else? It's okay, we can interact. Okay, that's fine. That's why I have 30 pages of notes here. So one of them is the seed, the sower, and the soil. Those are the three different mysteries here that he's talking about. So what is the sower? Who is the sower? Anybody, any guesses who the sower is who's just throwing seed around like they're a four-year-old throwing confetti at a birthday party? Anybody know who that might be? That's Jesus. That's God. That's the sower. He's just sprinkling the seed everywhere. What's the seed? What's he throwing around? The word. He's throwing around God's word. He's throwing around his own word. Just to everybody. Like I said, like a four-year-old at a, throwing confetti or glitter at a party. That does happen, right? I hope you've seen that in preschool all the time. And what about the soil? What's the mystery of the soil? That's us. That is us. But isn't it great that God just throws it everywhere? It's kind of interesting, like, wait, you're going to throw it on, on a rocky path. That's like throwing it on the stage and grow seed. Is that going to work? But God does it anyway. He throws it out constantly, always wanting it to go out there to everybody. Why? So it can serve a purpose. Just because we don't see the purpose, that's not for us to understand. That's what's great about it. It's a mystery. It's just what he does. He throws it everywhere for us. It's like a big giant, casting a big giant net into the ocean and collecting all the fish that we can collect. But we, he needs to throw it out there as much as possible. And the other mystery is what he tells the disciples. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing they do not see, through hearing they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing and never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. I put this in the message translation because sometimes that's, we kind of get that mystery, but let's see if we can understand it a little bit more with the message translation. This is what Jesus says, that's why I tell stories. To create readiness to nudge the people toward a welcome awakening. In their present state, they can stare till doomsday and not see it. It's like, put your hand out there and I'm gonna stare, but I just don't see it. 
listen till they are blue in the face and not get it. I don't want Isaiah's forecast repeated all over again. Your ears are open, but you don't hear a thing. Your eyes are awake, but you don't see a thing. Anybody seen somebody like that? They're just kind of one of those kind of moments. The people are stupid. They stick their fingers in their ears so that they don't have to listen. They screw their eyes shut so that they don't have to look at it. So they won't have to deal with me face to face and let me heal them. That's the other amazing mystery here is that he's trying to tell us to be ready. He's trying to tell us to get ready because the kingdom of God is at hand. Pastor Malcolm did this. Hold out your hand for me. Hold out your hand. How close is your hand? It's pretty close, right? Different for some people. Some people are taller, some people are short. That's how close it is. That's how close the kingdom of God is to you. That's how close doomsday is to each and every one of us. So it's time for us to be ready. But the thing is, some people will get it and some don't. Some people will get this understanding and some people will get God's word and scripture and it'll sit and some don't. But that's not for us to decide. That's the great thing. God's gonna just throw his word everywhere that he can. And we should throw his word wherever we can might come up in a situation where you might have an opportunity to share God's word and you might have an opportunity to throw some of your seed out. You think, eh, that person's not gonna understand it. They're not gonna get it. But that's not for us to judge. That's the amazing mystery of it is we still gotta cast it out there no matter what happens. It's the sower's job to do all of that. Again, God's the sower. We will hopefully bear fruit from what we do but we're the, we're the soil that receives God's word. We are the soil that receives God's word. And that's gonna bring me to number two, the actuality. The sower is God. He uses vessels and people to share God's word, each and every one of us. But ultimately he, but ultimately it's all him. The seeds are God's word, scattered into various soil. But the soil, not so great, is it? There are four types of soil here that we can see through this. We have the hard soil, which is found in verses uh, 4 and 19, the rocky soil. There's also the thorns and the good soil. Again, this is the actuality. This is how it applies to us today. So let's look at these, the hard soil. As we look at this, maybe try to figure out where you're at. So the hard soil here, verse 19, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed that was path, uh, sown along the path. Here's a look. Sometimes people get this, but we don't fully understand what's going on. The enemy comes and steals the soil. We might have a hard heart where the seed can't penetrate into the ground, and so the enemy comes like a bird, snatches it up, and takes it away from us. There's more at play here than this. This is more than just a bird coming along. But when we're talking about the enemy and we're talking about Satan and what he does, we're talking about spiritual warfare. The, the, the ground is too hard for it to get in. So what do you do with hard ground? You till it up. How do we till it up in spiritual warfare? We pray over it. We begin to pray and move and we can till up the land so that that seed can turn into good soil one day. But it's, it's spiritual warfare that's at play when something like this happens. The enemy comes along and he'll snatch God's word and it's fear, it's doubt, it's slander. All of those things is the enemy coming because it, it, it just doesn't have root to get in. God's word doesn't have root to get into their heart. Now you might know somebody like this. Honestly, I think I can relate to all four of these soils. Because see, I grew up in the church the seed was casted into me, but then I turned into a teenager and the enemy came and plucked it away. And I went and did my own thing, did whatever I wanted for at least 10 years until I was 27 years old. And God came to me in the middle of, the, of Bahrain, all alone in the middle of the night. And God said, I've got something better for you than this. I've been the hard soil. 
the, God's word had been cast onto me, but yet I rebelled. But thank God he continued to cast seed. And then we have the rocky places. That's the second type of soil. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. This is so true, isn't it? We see a new believer come and they get so overjoyed and they're so on fire for God. But as soon as something doesn't go right, they're like, I'd start to question and doubt. Is this right? Is this going to happen? Can this really do anything? Is God really that big and that powerful to be able to help me? As a pastor, I've been able to help people along with this journey and this path. And I've seen people go this way. They've, they're so on fire for God, and then they're here for like, you know, they're at church for like two or three months, but as soon as something hard comes along, a bad diagnosis, a fight with their spouse, they break up with their girlfriend or boyfriend, they quickly like, well, this is, I just don't have time anymore. I can't do this. I don't know if I believe in God anymore. But they just quickly fall away when something comes up. And the church and the community of believers become like a hindrance to them. Or they might even fall into sin or already living a sinful lifestyle and they just don't want their sin, their sin and their shame and that guilt to be out there and open. Again, that was me. I started going back to church for a phase and then I got divorced. I was getting right back into church. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go. I learned how to play guitar. I taught myself how to play guitar. And this is before I had my real connection with God and I was going back to church, and then I just, there was issues, and I had to get a divorce, and I left the church. I was just like, I don't, I know this guy, but I just don't think he can help me. I don't think that he can help me. And that was six months before I had my true encounter with God. And then we have the third type of soil, the thorns. I feel like this is the one that most of us fall into especially with our world. Debbie, you and I were talking about this. Matthew 13, 22, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of the life and the difficultness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Plainly, life gets in the way. Life gets in the way. We can come to church, but then, uh-oh, our, our kids have sports. I can come to church, but I don't know. I may have to work overtime. I can't go to the Bible study because I, I, have, I have to work. I can't make the men's group because something else came up. My buddies want to hang out. I can't make it to church because I've had a, just a really long week and I really just want to sleep. Oh, and then even the one, I, I, can't, I can't get into my Bible today. I've got to be early to work this morning. How often does life get in the way and choke us from experiencing God's word and his goodness every single day? Again, this is, I, I am this. There's, there's days where I have to stop myself and force myself to make sure that I'm reading the Bible because I was working full-time and going to school full-time about three years ago, and I've actually just finished up school this past, like, two weeks ago, um, but I was going through those things and I'm working full time, school, and I have five kids at home at that point. My life was busy. And I found myself not being able to have time to get into God's word. And I was going to school for evangelism. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one to laugh at, right? I was going to school to study this. And yet I didn't have time fully to dive in and have a Bible study and have true connection with God in those moments and that time. So I made time. I had to put on my phone, because I wear a smartwatch and have a, have a fancy phone, that it would remind me, hey, it's time to pray. Hey, it's time to read your Bible. It's time to do, I had to schedule it for myself just to get in that habitual habit so that I could be the final type of soil. I wanted to be good soil. I wanted to be able to be the good soil that produced fruit. This is what Jesus explains for this. But the seed falling on good soil 
refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Could you imagine if we were good soil that produced fruit? What is the fruit? It's the fruit of the Spirit. Joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. But then have you ever experienced somebody that's good soil? I have. I actually had an opportunity um, Friday. I got to meet with a girl that uh, comes to this church, and she's on a missionary trip up in Toledo, um, working on trying to reach college-age students. And I tell you, when you experience somebody with good soil who is on fire and who is actually producing fruit and bringing people to Jesus, and that fire that's in them, I'm telling you, it re-sparked me this weekend, and it's giving me a lot of spark and encouragement to be able to preach today. But they're just fun to be around, right? It's like getting next to a campfire on a nice cold fall night, and you're like, oh, that feels nice. I could do this all day. Let's, let's keep throwing some logs into this. That's what it's like to experience somebody who produces good fruit. You can just sense the Holy Spirit upon them, and you just want to be around them more and more. One interesting thing here, too, I'd like to point out. When we produce fruit, with God, we produce abundant fruit. God is not in the business of addition. Notice, 160 or 30, what, times. God is in the business of multiplication. That's what will be sown. That's what we can be when we are good soil. That person that people want to be around, comforting. Do you want to speak wisely, have grace, share Jesus with others? That's what we need to do. And this is the type of soil that we should strive to be. Which brings me to my third point. The response. Like I said, each parable has a moment where we have to come and we have to respond to God's word. Are we going to be hearers of God's word or not? So I ask you to self-examine yourself this morning. Take a moment. What is the condition of your heart? Where are we? Where am I individually? Am I the hard soil? Am I the rocky places where it's there, but it's just not going to grow really good? Am I the thorns where the, the busyness of life is just choking me and holding me back? Or are we really the good soil? Where are we at? Are we shallow at times? Or are you enthusiastic about your faith, but when things happen and the trials start to come your way, you fall apart from prayer and time and reading your Bible? Does your faith waver in the, fa in the face of challenges? Where are we at? I know where we want to be. We want to be the good soil, don't we? We want to be able to be that good soil that produces fruit but not just fruit, an abundance of fruit. Now, I've shared with you, I've been all four of these at one point in my life. And you might be good soil right now, and that's great if that's where you're at. Stay there. But what saved me from being all three of those? Prayer. If it wouldn't have been for my grandfather and my parents praying for me diligently all the time, every single night, I would not be here today. I can guarantee you that. I would not be good soil. And here's the greatest thing about this. It doesn't matter where you're at right now. It's where we want to be. We want to be the good soil. And the great thing is, is God is still sowing. He is still out there throwing his seed around. He is still out there throwing his word around for each and every one of us. So there is still time. There is time to get right with God. Time to plow the soil of your heart or plow the heart for others. It can be hard at the moment. Our, our hearts could be just like this, this stage. 
It might be surrounded by weeds or rocks. But it starts by plowing the field, getting the soil right, either for you or somebody you know. So this morning, I want you to take a moment. If you would, just close your eyes and bow your heads. And just pray to God that the seed of his amazing kingdom would take root in you and grow to be able to produce fruit. If you are ready to make that commitment this morning, I got a fun, helpful way to remind you. I'm a visual learner. I have to have visuals in my life where I don't remember to do things. I have seeds for you. I have seeds. If you want and you want to make that commitment to be good soil, I encourage you to come up and take seeds this morning. They'll be up here on the stage. They're just tomato seeds. They grow like all year long, especially in your house. So it should be fairly easy. But the interesting thing about this and why I'm using this as the application, one, it's seeds, right? But you've got to have good soil for them. You've got to plant them. You've got to nurture them. You've got to water them. You know, you can talk to them. I have a ton of house plants from my wife, and she talks to them constantly as she's watering them. Aren't you so good? She's even named them just so she can know, like, and talk to them more and be more personal with them. But that's what I want you to do. So as you're watering them, that's your reminder to pray. As you walk by them and see them, you'd be like, I'm going to talk to you. Oh, that's your mom moment and opportunity to read the Bible to it and experience the fruit of your labor when these grow and produce yummy cherry tomatoes. And then you can bring them in on a Sunday and share them with me, and I'll share in your fruits of your labors, and I'll share mine as well because my family loves cherry tomatoes. <laughs> but I hope this is the visual reminder for you this morning to be the good soil. Be the good soil and produce fruit. My prayer for you this week is that you've had eyes to see and ears to hear this morning. Just how much God loves you, because he's still throwing his seed around for you. Allow me to pray for you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you with grateful hearts. Thanking you for the wisdom and the truth that's found in your word. I pray that as we embark on this new series and explore the parables of Jesus, God, I ask for your guidance and understanding. Open our eyes to see the mysteries of your kingdom and our hearts to feel its presence and our ears to hear your call. Lord, I pray that you help us to be like the good soil that's ready to see, receive your word and produce a bountiful harvest in our lives. I pray that your teachings will take root in us and transform us into vessels of your love and grace. And God, give us the courage to spread your message far and wide. Because God, you are the sower who makes all things grow. I pray that each person here today will leave renewed and have a sense of purpose and a deeper connection to you. So I pray that you bless their efforts as we seek to live out your teachings and share your kingdom with the world. In Jesus' name, amen. As we conclude the message this morning, I want to turn our attention to the Lord's table. Another amazing mystery, actuality, and response. I'm going to ask the elders to come forward this morning to help me with this. In the parable of the sower, the seed symbolizes the word of God, and Jesus is the word made flesh. His life, death, and resurrection are the ultimate expression of God's word and love for us. When we come to this table, we remember that Jesus gave his body and his blood to nurture and to sustain us spiritually. And on the night of his death, 
Jesus took the bread and he broke it, saying that this is my body, which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup as well, saying this is the cup of the new covenant. my blood which has been poured out for you so as we take the bread and the cup today let us do it with open hearts receptive and ready to receive this life giving word of God as you come up to receive your elements this morning and you go back to your seats take time pause and remember just how amazing God is tell him you want to be the good soil Commit to being that good soil and allow God's word to transform you so that you can bear fruit in your life. Let us pray. Lord God, we do thank you for your word and for the sacrifice of Jesus. As we partake in communion, we ask that you prepare our hearts, making them fertile ground for your truth. Help us to live out our faith in a way that honors you and bears much fruit. In Jesus' name.